again. I'm checking my internet here. Uh, internet's not always great. Hopefully, if you were joined before, you can rejoin this one. That was kind of weird. So if you are here live, just say hi so we can chat and I can um, talk to you. And um, okay, sorry. Um, okay. Oh, this is being weird. Okay. I do see mom's here. Hi, mom. How are you? Sorry, it was connected and then it just disconnected like right away and then uh, it reconnected. So, you know, it's the internet. Maybe one day soon, hopefully I can have different internet here and have it be more stable. That would be amazing. How are you? I'm excited about tonight. We're going to be talking about um, substrates. I'll tell you what that is if you don't know already. And gessos, different kinds of gessos and different kinds of pastes and gels and how they work. And, you know, just like just like skimming the surface because we only have an hour. But um, I just want to introduce some of these things to you if you haven't seen them before. Or maybe I, you'll learn uh, something new if you have used them a bunch of times. Um, and we'll just play and hang out. So, um, if you're here live, say hi, so we can chat. Um, I'm just going to grab a couple more things. I think, I think that'll be good. I do, um, this is that cleanup of last week's. Isn't that pretty though? So pretty. Maybe we can use that tonight. I don't know. Uh, you have lots of goodies. I, I know. I'm so excited. You kept saying, hey, how about this? How about this? Yes. You shared it on Spaces. Oh, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I guess I should be doing that. I didn't think of that. That's why you're my lovely assistant. Where are my paper towels? I'll just use a baby wipe. That'll be fine. <clears throat> okay. Um... Yeah, so if you're here, say hi so we can chat. I'd love to um, say hi to you. Also, if you have questions as we go through this um, live, then just ask in the chat, and I'll try to keep up and answer right away. If you don't, that's fine. Or if you have questions later after we're done, um, even if you did watch live, uh, feel free to ask them anytime. I love answering questions and helping you guys out. So, all right, we're going to get started, and... Just switch my camera around. Here we go. Fancy. Love this. Um, okay. So first, I want to talk about substrates. So a substrate is literally just uh, the surface you're going to work on. So it could be a piece of paper. It could be, here I have a couple different canvases, different shapes. But these are stretched canvases. All right. So meaning they have a frame in here, usually a, made out of wood. You see under here, there's a wood frame. And then the canvas is wrapped around and stretched and uh, stapled or somehow adhered to, you know, connected to the back. Uh, and there are different levels and, you know, everything from like student all the way to professional grade. And it's mainly on how they're wrapped and what kind of canvas is used and what kind of um, if it's treated or not, that, those kinds of things. Um, this is the same thing. It's just in a triangle shape. So you can still see there's a, a frame in there. So this would be considered a stretched canvas. Anything like this with a frame on it. Even And even look at the thickness difference. So there's a difference in the thickness of the edge of the stretch canvas. So lots of different ways those come. All different shapes and sizes and everything. So... Um, and then there are canvas boards. I don't have any here with me for some reason. I know I have some somewhere, but I couldn't find them. But basically, it's um, canvas material wrapped around a board, like a thick board. Um, if canvas is treated, does it state that on the package? Uh, usually it does. It will say, um, uh, like, it's gesso, but it's whatever gesso they use, you know. I tend to gesso them anyway. Uh, and you'll learn when you, once you start using canvases, especially if you buy the same kind over and over, you'll learn what, what they've been treated with. But you can also just tell. Uh, let's see. So, yeah. So, see this side? Oh, that's really close. 
see this side of the canvas is white and you can tell that there's a texture let's see if i can mm, hard to see in the camera but you can tell there's kind of a texture on here but let's just flip this over and look behind here do you see how this is a totally different color it's like a um i don't know like an almond or a cream kind of color that is what natural canvas looks like so if your canvas is bright white like this chances are it's been treated and textured otherwise it's just going to look like fabric you know it's just canvas is fab a type of fabric so um but that's a really good question other types of substrates that we use all the time tags i mean they could be made out of any kind of paper yeah mushroom color yeah kind of um these are manila tags but you know there's white tags i mean a tag is really just because of the shape right so it could be made out of watercolor paper or bristol or um uh mixed media paper like really honestly whatever you want so but these tags are manila and this one i pre gesso just so when we get to the gessoing part we don't have to gesso it and wait for it to dry and everything it's ready to go but that's another substrate this is a piece of watercolor paper um, but again, there's so many different kinds of substrates. Um, you could work on chipboard, you could work on plastic, glass, metal, acetate, you know, fill in the blank. There's so, but that's what a substrate is. It's just whatever the surface is that you're going to create your art on. Okay. And then next I want to talk about gesso. Well, let me think. I think what we're going to do, I do want to talk about gesso because it's the next layer, but what I think I'm going to do is cover gels because we're going to use some of them and I want them to have time to dry uh, while we talk about gesso. So then we can come back and maybe create on them or, you know, play with them and show you the differences and similarities and why you might want to choose one over another for a different kind of project. So I have more gels than paste i really only have maybe two two or three pastes here let's see this says it's grit paste but i feel like it's a gel because it's clear and i think it's oh no it's matte well anyway one of his says it's one thing but it actually in the way that i think about it is different but anyway it doesn't matter sarah's here hi sarah Thanks for letting me show the post. Yeah, no problem. I love that. I love, uh, I'm happy to promote Art Esprit everywhere. So, okay. So I do have light and fluffy modeling paste. This one dries really quick, but um, I'll talk about the, the similarities and differences. And then I have some, these are like specialty paste, but there's lots of those. So let me get, um, let me get a tag. Well, let's see. Actually, why don't we just create on our, um, canvases and i'm going to get some here i've got these two here i'm just grabbing what i can find and i'm gonna put a a gel on one and a paste on the other sorry i don't know if you can hear those ladies in the hall yelling but they're just excited so we're gonna we're gonna let that go um okay so i'm gonna put let's see i'll put um a paste on this one and I'll put a gel on that one. Okay. So we're going to play with light and fluffy modeling paste. And probably you guys have, those of you watching live, I'm sure have already used this before, but, um, you know, this is for everybody. And some people are just getting started with mixed media. And so I want to make sure that we're all on level playing ground, uh, playing field, whatever. Um, so I'm just going to explain them and maybe, you know, Maybe I'll come up with some tidbit that you didn't know about. Um, light and fluffy is amazing. This one is, it feels like thicker because it probably has, is starting to dry out a little bit. Um, yeah. Okay. So I, any kind of paste or gel I put on the same way. I tend to use a palette knife. Um, I really like this. This is from Catalyst. It's Princeton Catalyst. Um, these are called silicone palette knives. Um, and, um, sorry, I'm reading your comments. I didn't actually read what the artist brief thing was. So now I'm excited. Mom said she joined. I'm curious now. <laughs> so I'm going to go check it out after. Um, but yeah, these are, um, silicone palette knives and, uh, they're really awesome, but you could use any kind. You could use, 
um, you know, they make metal ones, plastic ones, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, and so paste different from gels are generally, op well, not generally, they're always opaque. I, there, there is a clear paste out there, uh, but that is pretty rare. Okay. So I'm going to peel this. Uh, this is my favorite part is revealing the, uh, the texture underneath. Look at how cool that is. So we're, we're going to set this aside and let it dry. Um, and I'm just going to clean the edges here. But we're going to let this dry and then we'll play with it after it's dry and show you the difference between the clear and, or I'm sorry, the gel and the paste. So let me put that over there. And where's my, I've got to clean this while we're chatting here because the one, <clears throat> I never clean my stencils if I'm just using paint or ink or whatever, as you can see there. But, um, but, um, I do when I'm using a paste or a gel because it can ruin your stencil if you're not careful. So just be careful and clean it out after. Oh, let's see. Um, I'm doing a live every third Friday of the month in the Artist Spree Inspiration Group. Oh, that's wonderful. How cool is that? Yay. Okay. So it's a new, is it a new group then? The Inspiration Group? Is that a new group for Artist Spree? That's exciting. You make great projects. I would love to see that. Robin says, Cassie, I saw people use a scraper. Sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Anything that's flat and wide. Um, yeah, you could use a scraper. That's a good idea. Okay. Like, you know, in those dailies, I'm using the credit card a lot to move paint around and stuff. You could do something like that too. Um, <clears throat> just as long as it's kind of wide and flat you know, it'll work just fine. Okay. So now this one we're going to use. So let me talk about, keep talking about this just a little bit. So modeling paste. Um, okay. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks for telling me. I'm still going to go check it out, but make sure I'm joined, but that's exciting. Congrats on that too. That's really, that's really awesome. Um, so modeling paste, it's going to be opaque and, um, it's generally matte when it is dry uh, and it's going to soak in and accept color, okay? So I'm just gonna put this one next to it so we don't forget what we did. Now, when we're talking about gels, I've got a few different gels here and the, and just like modeling, modeling paste has a lot, some different varieties, but gels have like a million varieties. It's kind of crazy. So this is a 3D matte gel. And then you'll see, this is called ultra thick, kind of pretty much the same. This is a gel medium. It's much thinner and I'll show, I'll open them and show you the difference really between these three. These are all matte gels, but they can be glossy gels too. You can have glossy gels and those are pretty common and these all dry clear. Okay. Uh, and that's, that's the first big difference between a paste and a gel is that a gel is going to dry clear. So let me open this and just show you the difference in the thickness of it. So this is the, the 3D matte and the ultra thick is kind of the same. The 3D matte is a tiny bit thicker even. This is really good. This is from Finnevair line Prima. And the reason that this is so thick is because she uses a lot of like metal pieces and resin and she's building up layers and doing all that cool mixed media stuff. So she needs a glue. She uses this as a glue generally. Um, and because it's super strong when it dries, it's like cement, it's not going to go anywhere. And because it's such a thick gel that it's, um, it's really going to hold those heavier pieces with no problem whatsoever. Um, this is a gel medium. So it's considered like a soft gel. And look at, you can all, already see the difference. I mean, this has like peaks and valleys and you can see where my palette knife has been. It sort of leaves um, little valleys in there. And then this is like creamy and smooth and, and just, you know, has a, sort of a level top. So let me just show you before we play on the actual canvas, let me clean my palette knife here. And, um, Okay, here we go. Let's start with this one. So this is the gel medium. So this is like a soft gel. And can you see, it's kind of like, it's a little bit more buttery. It's look at, it's really creamy. It's easy to pick up. It's very loose, right? It's not falling off the, the palette knife, 
but it's a lot more loose than the thick one I'm going to show you. So that's the gel medium. Then I'll just show you this because it's out too. Um, the ultra thick is a bit heavier. You see that I get a bigger mound, right? Can you see that? Um, and it's still kind of creamy, you know, but it's just thicker and it's just a slightly stronger gel. Now, if you were doing the Finnevere, you know, style of like layering and collaging and stuff, um, this would work. <laughs> this is a really good adhesive. Uh, let's see, Ram says, if you add color to your gel, does it affect the results? Yes, I'll talk about that in just a minute. Thank you for the question. Now this one though, I'm gonna show you, look at this. It's creamy like the other one, but look, look at sideways. It's not even trying to move, not even a little bit. And I've got a lot on there. You see that? Look at, I'm doing this. It's, oh, it's starting to slip now, but I really have to shake it. So you see the difference there is just in the thickness of it. And the thickness of it determines, you know, just how, whoops, how, um, how well it's going to hold. Okay. So there we go. So I think let's just use the um, ultra thick. Okay. I'm going to put this one off to the side. The gel medium is really not, I mean, you can use it through a stencil and you're going to get um, a little bit of texture, but you're not going to get as much dimension. It's not going to hold up and, and be really thick if that's what you want. Um, but here we've got ultra thick and I'm going to do, I'm going to do just part of this because I also want to show you some of these. Um, well, maybe we could do that on a different surface. Maybe let's do that. Um, yeah, let me do this really quick and then I'll talk about the color part of it. Okay, so here I've got some. Um, this is the ultra thick gel. And again, these are all matte, but um, gel does often come in, in a glossy finish. And glossy is really nice. If you want to have, um, well, I mean, sometimes it's nice to just have a glossy finish, but also if you are, oh, did it move? No, I don't think it did. Um, if you want to, I want to have some dimension in here. So I'm going to add a little bit more than I normally would. Um, it's really great for like doing batik stuff because it acts as a resist, you know, the, um, the gel because of the way it's made. And the finish of it, uh, when you put other color over it, like a like a spray or something, it will just bead right off and resist. Whereas the paste is going to hold on to that color and soak it in. So that's another one of the differences. Okay, let me put this aside and lift this off. Ooh, yeah, it's nice and thick. Okay, let me get my baby wipe there. I've got to get the excess off here. Usually I'll put it back in the tub. I forgot to leave it open and it's fine. We're just doing demo, so. Okay, here we go. So there we go. Can you see? Very nice. Now when they're both wet, this one is still probably fairly wet. They look pretty similar. They both look white and they both have texture and dimension. But let's let them dry and then we'll come back and check them out. Let me clean this and I'll talk about the color thing. So, um, so Robin says, if you add color to your gel, does it affect the results? It does. It will make it colored, but um, it will be a translucent color. So it won't be necessarily super vibrant and opaque uh, like that. Okay. Because gel is transparent or translucent at least. So you will get a color, I need a new baby wipe, but it will be, um, you'll be able to see through it a little bit, you know, whereas if you added color to a paste, you're going to get a lighter version of that color because the paste has, um, has like white base in it, you know, because it's opaque. So it's got like a white base, but, uh, you will get the color. It'll just be a lighter version. So if you want it to be a stronger color in the paste, then you just have to add more pigment. 
hope that helps. And like I was telling you earlier, there is one that I know of, at least there is one brand that has a clear modeling paste and that is made specifically so you can add color to it and you won't get like a lighter pastel version. You'll get a, a slightly more true color of that, um, of that color, whatever you're adding to that paste. And that is from the crafters workshop who is also who makes um, the model, this light and fluffy. They have a clear modeling paste and it looks white when it's in the tub, right? Because it's still wet, but when it dries, it's clear. And I think it's a matte version. I'm not positive, but I think it is. Um, and yeah, so then you could add color to that, but definitely you can add color to any kind of paste. Okay. All right. So I've got watercolor paper here. And actually, I've got one that has some color on it already from last week when we were playing around. So I'm just going to add some fun texture paste to this. So we've got the basic paste here, and we've talked a little bit about some of their, um, you know, the qualities of them. But then we also have tons of specialty paste. And this is, this isn't even scratching the surface. This is like basically two or three different kinds of paste. But think about like Lunar Paste from Ranger. <coughs> or stencil butter from, <coughs> excuse me, from the crafters workshop or um, Finnevere has some really great texture paste. They have color to them. Sometimes they have uh, like chunky glitter in them. And generally those are gels, just, just saying from like my memory, but, um, but you know, they all behave a little bit differently. So what I would say, if you get a new paste or gel or whatever, sometimes it says it's a paste, but it behaves more like a gel. You know what I mean? And people just use the words sort of interchangeably sometimes. So just test it, you know, just get, do a little test on a sample piece of paper or something just to see what it does. I generally like to, when I get a totally new thing, I'll, you know, do my little sample board or whatever so that I can one see what it looks like when it dries and then I'll try to put stuff over it you know like I'll spray something over it and see does it beat up and roll off does it absorb it you know and then you can kind of learn more about um the qualities of it especially when it's like a brand new product all right I'm looking for another stencil see if I have any other stencils here let me know if you have any other questions as we're going oh here's a fun one Okay, that one works. Oh, I got a couple over here. Let's see. Okay, very good. Also some lace. Okay, we have that one. We have that one of mine. So let's just play with this for a minute. So this one is Grit Paste Crypt. And this one only comes out around, um, oh, you know, uh, what is it? Halloween. Uh, hold on, I got to notification popping up here. Um, yeah. So, but I have some, so I thought, well, why not just use it? And we can talk about what it actually is. It's called crypt paste, but what is it? Um, there are, there are lots of other kinds of paste, um, that we haven't even talked about. There's some with glass beads in it. There's some that are, that's called, uh, what is it called? Like string gel, you know, and it's just thick and you can just like, you can make strings on your page or whatever. There's some with sand in it, uh, different kinds of textures like that. So there's tons of different kinds of paste and gels. These are just more of the basics. Robin said, I have a TCW shimmery goodness. Oh yeah, that's really good. So that is more of um, a pearlescent like additive. You can use it on its own and it's almost like a white paint with like a pearlescence to it, but you can also mix it with other things with color or whatever. And it is a little bit thicker than regular paint. And um, so that's a really fun one to use. Yeah, that's really popular too. Um, okay, so this is a paste. It is like a sand paste because it's got, it's really hard to tell on the camera, but it does have grit to it. Um, it's not completely smooth. And it also has some thicker pieces. I don't know if you can see, but yeah, you kind of can. Can you see those um, like dark spots 
those are actually little pieces of black sand that is in here that's a little bit more coarse and then they just colored the paste and made it like a mushroomy gray kind of color so that's all it is but let's use a little bit here so we can see how it dries and what we can do with it okay so i'm just going to put a little on the edge here keeping it kind of thin i do want you to see the you know the height of it but i also want it to dry while we're still alive <laughs> and sometimes paste can be really dense and take a long time to dry so that's another thing there's so many variables but that's just another thing to look out for um one of the reasons i really like the light and fluffy is because it's usually dry within like five minutes or so because it's almost like it's been whipped you know so it's got a lot of air in it so then it dries faster uh, but regular modeling paste is just thicker. It's just denser and thicker. And so it takes a little bit longer to dry. No big deal. Okay. So there's this. So let's look at this when it's laid out. Now it already has a color because they pre-colored the paste. But again, like mom was saying earlier, you know, if you've got light and fluffy and you want to give it color, put it here on the, on your side of your palette and, um, and, and we can do that actually, if you want, so I can show you the difference. That's a good idea. Um, let me do that so I can show you the difference and, uh, from when you color it yourself versus using it just as white. All right. Sorry. I have to keep cleaning these. I don't love cleaning stuff, but we also don't want to wreck our things. Okay. Um, let me do this one and then we will put some color in a paste and a gel and put it on a new piece of paper so you can see. Renee's here. Hi, Renee. I was literally just thinking about you. I'm so excited Michaela's moving back home. Woohoo! Or at least a lot closer to you. Um, let's see. If you put modeling paste down, let it dry a bit. Could you use a stamp to make an impression? Ooh, that's a very good idea. Yes. Yes, you definitely could. Um, uh, let's see. Let me think about that. Y you could, what I would say, if you're going to try that, I would put, um, uh, like Versamark or, you know, embossing ink on the stamp. I would stamp it in that first just to give it a barrier and to give it like, to allow it to lift off of the paste without just sticking to it and making a mess. I would try that. I don't know for sure if it would work, but it's definitely worth trying. Um, okay, so let me just show you this one. This is another style of paste. This is called Glacier Paste. It's from Nuvo, and it's got like little tiny bits of mica in it that give it just the most beautiful shimmer. And it's super uh, buttery and creamy. Okay. And it's really easy to apply and it comes in lots of colors. So they've already given it a color for you. So that's also nice. And like I said, there's tons of specialty paste. If you think of like the stencil butter or the, um, um, you know, the, um, oh, it just left my brain. <sighs> Simon Hurley's lunar paste. Um, or what about, all the the glitter gels yes all the glitter gels i mean lots of people make those right they're so fun and pretty in a in a really safe uh not messy way to use glitter for people that like glitter but don't like the mess okay let's check this one out look at how pretty oh ooh, it's so pretty and i'll show you these can you see that shimmer already it's even more when it dries so that's really cool okay so I'm just going to keep cleaning my stencil and go and go and go. So now I'm going to show you what it looks like when you put, uh, here we go. That shimmer gets everywhere. It's crazy. Um, I'm going to show you what it looks like um, when you put color into the paste and the gel. Okay. And I've got another um, piece of uh, watercolor paper here. Okay. Let's see. I have a couple. Oh, let's see. 
I'm adding, I like adding some embossing powder to make something like stencil butter or light and fluffy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, I often will um, do something like this and while it's still wet, just sprinkle embossing powder over it and dry it. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Cause then you have even more dimension with your embossing powder. So that's a great idea, Sarah. Um, do you use a heat gun onto it? Oh, I don't know if she does, but I do. Oh, yes, she does. I see that. The shimmer looked amazing. It is amazing. In person, it's like even more like, wow, it's really crazy. Okay, let's, um, yeah, this is what we're going to do next. So I'm going to get the light and fluffy. We'll do that one first. So this is just what happens if you add some color to it. We know what it's going to be like clear. Let's add a little bit of color. So I'm just going to get a little bit and put it on my mat. I've got a glass mat here to work on, a glass surface. You could use a Teflon mat or whatever you want. Uh, let's see, I've got some um, liquid watercolors here, so why don't you just use that? And I'm gonna put the same color in when I do the modeling paste versus the gel so you can see the difference, okay? One, two, three, four, five, oh, six, okay? I had six drops, so don't let me forget. All right, so now I'm going to mix it up. Wow, that's a beautiful color. My goodness. And I put a lot and I don't have a lot of paste. So we're going to have a pretty strong color. And remember what I said, if you want a stronger color like this, you just have to add more pigment because this is a paste. Wow, that's so pretty. Mm. Thanks, Ken Oliver, for this amazing color. All right, so I'm just making sure it's mixed up really well. But can you see, let's just do this. I'm going to put this directly on here so we can see the true color versus what it looks like through the paste and the gel. Okay, let's get a brush here and just. All right, so that's what it looks like. Let's see, because I think it was darker too before it was. Okay, so there's kind of the range of the color. All right, very nice. And might as well keep using a stencil here. Let's use my stencil. And we're gonna put this through. So yeah, if you have white embossing, oh, I'm sorry, white modeling paste or white gel, you honestly can have any color you want because all you have to do is add a little color through here. Very pretty. <gasps> Look at how pretty that is. Yay, I love it. Okay, and then I've got a lot left. Let's use it somewhere. Why don't I put some more on here? Really hate wastings stuff like this. I'm probably going to have to waste some of it because there's a lot. All right. Even if it's on stu stuff like this, then I can still use it later. Oh, that's really pretty with the blue behind there. Let me sh show you close up. Isn't that nice? Okay. And then here, I've got another tag here. Let's just start a tag. Hmm, that's so pretty. And that, oh, whoops. That one went right through. Oh, well. Um, and that color, that watercolor is really nice too because... Uh, I didn't really use a lot of it and it really did color quite a bit. So, all right, I will wash the rest of this off now. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to need another baby wipe. All right, let's just do it this way. Easiest way to clean, um, paste or gel off of your stencil. I just spritz it with water or take it, actually take it to the sink. That's definitely the easiest way. But if you're not near a sink, you can do this. Or if you know you're going to be playing with pastes and gels, um, get a little bucket of water, which is what I should have done here. And um, 
and then you can just set it in the water and let it go and then the paste and gel won't dry on there and you know mess it up and then you can just go wash it in the sink when you're done playing for the day that is probably the best way to do it okay cleaning up my mess how are we doing how's everybody doing how's your week tell me about yourself what's going on okay all right nice and clean i'm gonna use the same color let's do the gel and i'm going to use the ultra thick because that's what we put on the canvas so we're just gonna stick with what we've already been using i'm not gonna get as much well actually I probably should just so we have a similar comparison. <clears throat> okay, so I've got, this is now the ultra thick gel medium. Okay, now this is gel versus the paste. So now let's add our color. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Same amount of drops. Let's see what we get. Oh, so pretty. I can already tell that the color is a little bit harder to blend because it like, it wants to just roll off of it. But it's so beautiful, isn't it? Already looks different. Okay, let's see. Uh, my mother-in-law is in town, so she's taking the kids for outings every day. Oh, that's such a lovely treat for them and for you. Very nice. Wow, isn't this color so pretty? I'm, I'm happy I chose it. Okay, so now let's do this again and let's do, we're gonna do it this way. <coughs> Excuse me, so it's going in a different direction so we can say paste gel. Okay, here we go. Now with gels in general, unless you're using that super thick one, you're not going to get quite as much lift or dimension naturally because um, gels just aren't as stiff as pastes are. But you'll still get enough. Oops. Okay, here we go. That looks pretty good. Lift. Oh, pretty. Pretty, pretty. All right, I'll show you up close. You can't really tell a difference right now. They look pretty similar. This one actually looks a little bit darker, I think, maybe. But we're going to let this dry, put it off to the side, and then we'll come back and look at it later. Okay, and I am going to get one more tag here so I can pick up the rest of this gel, and we'll just use it on a project later on. That way, I'm not going to waste any of this goodness. This poor stencil has been abused, as lots of my stencils are. Not on purpose. Just accidentally. Okay, there we go. Good enough. And I will get rid of the rest. While I make a big old mess. Okay, let me put these over here. There we go. Now they're really out of the way. How are we doing? How's our time? I don't have any restrictions tonight. So if I go over and you guys want to hang out longer, I'm good with that. Henry's play is this weekend. This is a busy week. Lots going on every single day, but it's good. Keeps us moving. Okay, done with that. I'm all sticky. So let me clean off this counter or this mat one more time. Oh, my fingers are so sticky. It's super fun. We're going to talk about gesso next. And, um, and then we'll come back to the paste and the gels because they should be pretty well dry. And then we can finish up with that. Ooh, hold on. I've got paper towel right behind me. I didn't even have to get up, which is lovely. Okay, wiping that down. I just got to clean my hands really quick because they're very sticky. Okay. Oh, so sticky. Here we go. 
Okay, so craziness with the weather. This morning, when I when Henry walked to school, it was 19 degrees outside. We could see our breath, and I was complaining. Of course I was. And when I came, got in the car to come here tonight to the studio to do this live, it was 44 degrees, and I didn't wear a jacket. <laughs> and it's all in the same day. So there you go. Okay, let's talk about... Um, gesso. Yay, gesso. All right. I'm moving all the pastes and gels out of the way. So generally, when we think about gesso, we think of white gesso. That is definitely 100% the most common. There's regular gesso. There's, uh, in general, anyway, there's regular gesso and there's heavy body gesso. Heavy, excuse me, heavy body gesso is just thicker. And generally speaking, you need maybe only one coat of gesso, where sometimes for other um, types of gessos, you might need more, maybe two coats. Um, there are lots of different brands that make gesso. And I'm just going to say not all gesso is created equal. And um, if you have used some gesso in the past and you're like, oh, I hate gesso, <laughs> right? Or like you just really didn't have a good time with it. It probably was because of the brand, to be honest. So I'm going to say Liquitex and Golden for everything across the board are amazing. Okay. Um, those, the, like you, if you buy Liquitex or Golden, anything in the acrylic paint world, you're going to be happy. All right. Even the, even the student grade is great. This is just, oh, this says professional, but yeah, it's just regular gesso. It comes in all different sizes. White is the most common. Okay. I've put white gesso on this tag versus this tag because I'm going to show you why we why we like gesso. Um, but I also kind of want to talk about other gessos. Okay. So I do also have clear gesso. And let's say we want to, I've got this right here. So let's, I'm just going to use the clear gesso. It can be used as an adhesive. It's better if it is um, not, but you can definitely do it like I'm going to do right now. So I've got some clear gesso and I'm going to put it down. And of course it looks white in the container. Um, but when you put it down, sorry, itchy nose. And as it dries, uh, it's definitely clear. And so the benefit of clear gesso, of course, is if I have something like this down here and I don't want to lose the print that I have, but I want to create over top of it, then I use clear gesso, I can still see what's down there, and then I can work over top of it as well and have the benefit of both. If I put white gesso over this, you're gonna basically cover it up, right? So clear gesso is definitely your friend and um, can be very valuable and useful uh, for different things. Okay, so there we go. All nice. Okay, I just use my palette knife, no big deal. and. We're going to sit and let that dry and then we'll we'll work on top of it and then we'll compare even this to this this one is going to have no gesso let me write that down so we remember something that isn't white here we go I'm just use a pen okay no gesso white gesso and then when this is dry we'll do clear there's also black, okay? So here's, I have black heavy body, um, and this is from Finnevere. She uses a lot of heavy body because again, she's working with those big chunky materials and it's a lot easier to dip your brush in here and just smush it on those, all those surfaces that have all the texture and everything and get down in the texture. It's easier with a thicker gesso, but it's just, it's like, you know, it is gesso, it's just black. And the difference between gesso and um, just say like regular acrylic paint is that gesso has an acrylic, well, acrylic gesso has an acrylic paint base, but it also has other things in it that give it like a tooth so that other, uh, pigments can, um, stick to it and, and, create the results you want instead of like, if you just put acrylic paint on something, and then you try to do watercolor over it, it's going to kind of beat up and roll off because acrylic paint all on its own has like a plastic, is 
uh, has a plastic um, like finish to it. So it's going to resist some water-based things. But with gesso, it doesn't do that. And that's why. And that's why we use gesso versus just regular acrylic paint. Sometimes because we want it, we want whatever we're going to put on top of it to behave in the way that we know it should. All right. And that'll make more sense as we go if you if you haven't used it before or you're just not quite sure. Okay. So that so but then also what's really cool is that these are also gessos. And these are Jane Davenport gessos. And if you're in the Art Journal Adventure group, you got one of these uh, a few months ago, several months ago. But um, these are also gessos. So you can hold on and get another tag. Why not? <clears throat> you can put them on and unlike regular acrylic paint. Okay, come on. There we go. Uh, once I put this on, I still can go over it with, Ooh, I got to shake it with watercolor with, um, you know, pencils, markers, whatever. It works great with colored pencils love doing that. So um, that's the really nice thing. Let me just clean that up because it wasn't ready for me right away and I tried too soon. That should be better. Let's see. Let's just put a little bit more down here. Okay. And let's shake this last one up. <clears throat> so I've got like a pink gray and this is like a turquoisey blue color. What is this one called? Blitheful blue. Okay, let's see. Are we ready? There you go. And we'll use our palette knife again. Clean it up. So we're just going to move this around and let it dry. And it dries matte because it's a gesso. Gesso is meant to be matte so that you can put other things on top of it. It's not meant to be the thing that you use on the top. Um, it can be. You know, I, I use these particular gessos because they're just such beautiful colors. And sometimes I just want a matte finish. Uh, you can definitely use it just as a regular paint. But uh, they're meant to be you know, layered on top of, oh, look at that pink. Oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> it makes me excited. I'm just going to go over the purple or the gray a little bit. That's fun. Love that. Oh, I see. Um, I have absorbent ground. Can that be used like gesso? You know what? I wish I had some here and I really wanted to. Um, I do have something, some, um, it's like teaching material coming out soon that is going to talk more about absorbent ground and compare it to gesso but the answer is yes yes you can use it like gesso it um it actually has some features that make it a little bit more desirable than gesso in certain scenarios so um yeah the the answer for you right now is definitely yes Absorbent ground can be used like gesso, but I do, but there is more I want to say on that. I just am not ready to say it today, but thanks for asking that question. That's a great question. Okay. So this is my colored gesso and gesso can come in any kind of color. And once again, you can just have white gesso and then add color to it. And it's okay if you use, if you add acrylic paint to gesso, or if you add like this watercolor to gesso, that's fine. You can, and you can make a color and you can put it on whatever, and then you can keep going. Definitely 100%. Okay. All right. So then let's just compare this white versus no for, for now. And let's talk about why we care about gesso. Um, let's see, what do I want to use? Let's play with, hmm, you know what? Hold on. I've got some distressed, distressed spray right here. Sorry, I'm going, going rogue here for a second. Um, this is a pretty color and I just want spray stain. Ooh. Nope. I want that one. That might be fine. Yeah, saltwater taffy is a good one. Okay. 
Very good. Let's do those. It doesn't really matter. Just want fun colors to play with. <clears throat> Let me get a drink of water. How are we doing? You guys good? Okay. Here's why we like gesso. First, let me put this one over here so it can still dry. First, I'm going to put, um, we'll start with this purple. This is uh, shaded lilac and this is a spray stain. So it's um, Distress Spray Stain is a water-based um, spray, dye spray. And I'm going to do it on here. And it's water reactive. So that means that once it dries, if you get it wet again, it'll move around, provided it's on the right surface. Okay. So first we're just going to, oh, isn't that gorgeous? Wow. Look at how it's beating up. That's interesting. Okay. So here it is. I'm going to put some water on here. Notice how it sits on top of the gesso and moves around really nice. I can, I can make it more fluid. I can add water to it and let it be kind of water, have a watercolor effect. Isn't that a gorgeous color? Oh my goodness. I love it. Okay. And then here is the same thing. Do the exact same thing. Oh, I got it on this canvas. Hold on. Let me move that out of the way. It's the exact same thing on no gesso. Okay. Let's try and get some water on here. Okay. So I'm moving it around. I put some water down. Look at Number one, it's soaked right in. If I put more water on, it's done. It's toast. It's in, it's soaked right through the paper and into the paper. And so now it is what it is. It's not moving. And we've got blotches because we couldn't move the, 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 um, the pigment around. Here on the gesso, Look at, I mean, it's still even wet. It's just sitting on top of that gesso. If we dry it, let me dry it. <clears throat> I do want to take a minute just to dry this because I want to show you something else. <clears throat> Doesn't even look like this. I know. Well, part of the reason is because this is, um, you know, this is a manila tag. So that is going to affect the color. But I can, I should, in all fairness, show you what it looks like on the clear gesso also, because this is the same color as this. So that, that will show that comparison. But you're right. Absolutely. Let me uh, dry all of these. I just remember, I'm just like remembering right now how much I love this color. It's so pretty, my goodness. Okay, almost there. Let me see if it's dry enough. Okay. I'm going to move this one out of the way and this too and put this up here and let's add some color. Oh, hold on, man. I don't know about you guys, but my allergies are driving me crazy. Okay. Let's add some color to this clear gesso. Okay. So it's moving around. I may not have got clear gesso everywhere. So there's that, but so far it looks pretty good. Notice it is moving around. It's not automatically soaking right in. Okay. And the only difference is we have clear gesso versus none. <clears throat> All right. And it's still moving around. So let's dry it. But yeah, here to here, the color is different because we're using a different, um, we have a different color substrate, right? So that's definitely going to make a difference. But the real true test of the color is going to be between these two. Carol, hi. Oh, no problem. You can watch the replay, but thanks for coming to say hi. We miss you. All right. <clears throat> so here you can see it's already behaving more like this one than like this one, right? Because we have the gesso down. The color's a little different, like we said, but otherwise it is behaving the same way. And what I'm going to do just for time's sake is pick up where it's still kind of wet 
because we don't, I don't care about that. I just want you to see the similarities and the difference. So let's compare these two. Can you see the difference here already? And okay, this is, is this dry? It's not completely dry. Let's dry it so I can really show you what it really does. I talked to Don this morning. His allergies were really, yeah, they are there. I'm already taking Clonase and I don't usually start that till like April or May usually. Okay. So now I've got all three of these. I'm going to do the water test. So we're going to sprinkle the water, sprinkle the water, sprinkle the water. Okay. And I'm going to get a fresh piece of paper towel, nice and dry. That other one was pretty wet. Okay. Let's start over here. This is the white gesso. We picked up some color and look at how cool that looks. And remember, this works because it's distress spray stain and that is water reactive. Okay, again, we picked up color and look at the splatter. How cool is that, right? And then let's do the last one. It did not pick up any color. It's sort of splattered, but not, not in any kind of way like this. Uh, let's see. I like that on clear. It looks smoky. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's really pretty. But okay, can you already see the difference? So on the no gesso, we have no control. It soaks into the paper. It doesn't let us re-wet it or take any of the color off or make it distressy. It doesn't do any of that. And it doesn't allow for any kind of blending. So let's let's pick up some saltwater taffy. All right. And let's start over here. And I'm just going to, oh, come on. There we go. That's also a beautiful color. And then I'm going to, whoa, I'm going to throw the water bottle. And then <laughs> I'm going to get it wet. And look at when I get it wet, that blue is reactivating. And let's see. Oh, can I blend the colors? I sure can. Can you see those colors blending? Mm, pretty, pretty, pretty. I'm going to set this aside. Let's do the same thing to the clear for our comparison. Man, that's a pretty color. Okay. And then we're going to get it wet. Of course, it's clear gesso. So we definitely, it's going to behave just like the white, except you can see what's underneath still. Okay. And you can see it's blending. Okay. All right. And now let's do it with this one. Pretty sure you already know what's going to happen. Okay, I'm putting it on. It sits on top for a minute. Okay, I'm trying to blend. Nope, it just all soaked right in. It's not going to blend. It's not going to do anything because all it's going to do is soak in. So there we go. It's not horrible, but it's definitely not what you want, right? And then, of course, the other rules are still going to apply. So I just wanted to show you the blending thing. So there we go. Look at how pretty. I love that pattern on there too. Okay. So there, that's why we like gesso. That's, that's the simplest way to show you uh, the differences and why we want gesso. Um, <clears throat> let's just put some color on this one for fun. This is, you know, this is colored gesso, obviously. Um, but I just want to show you that you can still put other, oops, other things over top of it. Let's, let's do the opposite and you're just going to get slightly different look because you're working on top of a different color. Just like when we did the white to the clear, really pretty still. Um, let's do some of this on the top half. Nice. There we go. I'm just making a big old mess now just want to show you, you can still blend. It still sits on top. Eventually that's going to dry and going to look really cool. And it behaves just like the white and the clear gesso does. So I'm going to dry these real quick, just enough to move them out of the way. And then let's go back to our paste and gel and use these same sprays and see what we get. And then, uh, and I think we can be done unless you guys have more questions or if there's anything that you want me to test or try or like, Hey, what happens if you do this? Like we did with the color earlier. That was fun. Um, let me know and we can do it. We can do it while we're here live. And if you're watching the replay and you're like, oh, I wish you would have tested this or that or whatever. Let me know and, um, you know, we can work it out. Maybe I can 
go over it quick next week before we start the next step of our process. So there we go. Is this, I think this is a pretty good um, lesson to show you why we use gesso and what the different ways look like. Okay, so I'm gonna move these all out of the way. They're all here. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna dab the excess because I really just wanna put them away. <laughs> and I don't want them to make a mess everywhere. I will use these for something though. These are fun. Sometimes when I want to create, but I'm just like not sure what to do or not feeling super creative, I'll just, I'll do this to tags and I'll add texture and I'll add whatever and just put down fun, pretty colors and that makes me happy and then I can be done. And then I put all my tags in a bucket and then when I want to make something, I just get one out and make something. All right, so let's look at our paste and gels real quick make sure they're dry. This one definitely is dry. Um, this is the light and fluffy modeling paste. And then this one is the, um, we used the ultra thick gel medium from uh, Ranger. This one, this one actually is still wet, believe it or not. So let's give this a quick zap. We can start playing with this one, but this one needs to dry a little bit more. If you use a stencil on the water reactive spray after it dries, can you wet the paper towel to make a pattern? 100% yes, because um, any water or or um, anything wet will will make it react. So here I can show you real quick while that while that is drying. So we've got like some up here that's dry, and then if we take our Oh, come on. Here we go. I'll just use this one and I'll get my paper towel and get it wet. How about that? Okay. You could use baby wipe, definitely. And then just hold your stencil down and then you could wipe whatever you got to do. There you go. Can you see up there? pulls that color right off of there. That's a really good question. Mom always has good questions. <clears throat> yep, you definitely can do that. Okay, let's play with this one first. This one, man, it is so wet still. That's a bummer. It's because it's thicker. Okay, so let's look at... This is hearts all over it. Let's just use our same colors because that's what we got here. I'm just going to put a little bit here. I, I like to add water and then just kind of let it move around. It goes into the cracks and it goes a little bit everywhere. But you see it's like staying on the, the hearts, but then also going down into the cracks and getting on the... Um, on the canvas as well. And then, you know, how much water you add determines like how intense that color is or not. I just like to add the water so I can move it all around. So there we go. And then wet, as this dries, the color is gonna stay on the hearts and on the um, texture underneath or the canvas underneath. This live is getting me excited for the retreat and you teaching us classes live. Oh, for sure. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. We've still got a few months away and those classes are gonna be um, a lot different than this as far as like what we're learning. It's gonna be really in depth, but I am so excited for that. Um, okay, let's see if we can do any part of this. I'm a little bit bummed. Like this real thin part is dry, but this part, I mean, it's still coming off on my finger, which is a total bummer. I really want to show you the difference. So just give me another minute here. That's so pretty. I wonder what I'm going to do with that. <laughs> I'll figure it out. Okay. Almost done. Almost done. Maybe I'm just going to show you the strip here and let this other part dry longer. <clears throat> All right, let's just see what we got. Um, it's, yeah, let me let it cool for just a second. Let's look at these. 
because I forgot about these. So remember we did colored paste and gel. We used the same color and the same intensity. And this is what we got. Um, if you can, I, I don't know how well you can see in the camera. It looks okay on my end, but this is the paste and this is the gel. And can you see this is more muted slightly? They're they're pretty similar in tone, I would say, but this one is a little bit darker and a little bit brighter. Now this was the ultra thick gel medium. This says heavyweight glue. Uh, it says it has a matte finish, but it looks kind of glossy to me. Let's see, is it because it's wet? It's a little wet, okay. It's, I would say it's more of a satin finish than a matte. This is definitely a matte finish. And let me hold them up separately and see if I can get the camera to really show you. This is, you can actually tell better right here. I mean, it is already dry too, but um, it's definitely a matte finish. This one, I would say is more of like a satin finish than matte. But again, remember, glosses or gels do come in a gloss um, finish as well sometimes. Can you see? Can you see that shine on there? That tells you it's not totally matte. But and it is also a little bit brighter. Okay. The way we could tell the translucency is if we had a pattern or something underneath here and we had a thicker like application of it, then you would really be able to tell the translucency versus the opacity. Um, but that will be another lesson. Let's see. Off topic question, but could you do paint pour over that heart canvas? I don't want you to do it, but just wondering. Uh, one, yeah, definitely you could. Um, because paint pouring is a thinner paint. So it's almost like, um, um, like it's thinner than soft body. I would say it's almost like a, what is this? Fluid acrylic, right? in the thickness of it so it would just it's thicker than a spray but thinner than paint right so it would it would settle in the cracks and you would have that texture that would be really cool looking yeah okay let's just do this oh little part here so we can see the differences okay and i'm gonna use this paper all right let's see what we get i i don't think i can go everywhere here we go okay And we spray it with water. Okay, and then we're gonna dry this. It's important that you see it mostly dry. Let me dry this one too. I'll dry them together. Cause I want you to see the difference in um, what happens on the surface of the textured area of the gel versus the mat or versus the paste. Okay. And then we'll be done for sure. You guys are hanging out longer. Thank you so much. I love you guys. Next week. What is next week? Mm, I didn't post it yet. Let me think about it. Mm, I think it's nope. I'm not going to guess. I'll, I'll wait. I have my list at home and when I get home, I'll post the next event for next Wednesday. It will be at six like tonight was. So hopefully that works better for some people a little bit later in the evening. Um, okay. Am I dry enough? Almost, almost. Okay. I think I'm just about there. Usually you just kind of let this sit and dry on its own, but I'm doing the demo and I'm also pretty impatient. Look at how much pink is in that, um, is in this shaded lilac. That's just what pulled out of the edges of it. That's really cool. Okay, so this part is dry over here. This is the paste member. I'm just gonna tap it and kind of wipe it. And you see the color is gonna stay on the heart. It, it like soaks it up and absorbs into it. Okay, if I do the same thing here on the gel, I'm going to just dab it and wipe. It, it lifts and creates, this creates a resist. So this, again, says it's a matte finish. This is dry and it looks pretty glossy to me. <laughs> so can you see that gloss there? 
this part where the color is, that is dry and it's got a shine to it. So I'm going to say this is not matte finish, which is fine. Um, but that's what it is. But how cool is that? So, I mean, having the white underneath is really cool because you put your color down and then you wipe when it's dry with like a baby wipe. Um, and you get a really cool like batik effect, but also imagine if you had like, what if you had like a pink or a yellow underneath and then you put the blue over top, uh, it would turn your, this part green, right? Because the colors would mix, but then this part would all be pink or yellow, whatever color you had underneath. So you can make, create some really cool batik effects, um, when you use a gel, especially a gloss gel. Okay, I hope that was helpful. I am gonna just cover this whole thing while we're talking. And then when it dries, I will wipe away the, um, the excess. I'm gonna color this some more as well and let them sit and dry. And then we'll see what they look like next week when they're fully dry. All right, so let me switch back over. If, if you have any, do you have any other questions before we end for today? Um, my fingers didn't get very dirty. That's nice. Okay. So I think I showed you all the things. Oh, we didn't really look at this one again after it dried, but it looks pretty much the same if I show you up close, but can you see that shimmer in that light blue one? Really cool. Specialty pastes and gels are so awesome. And like I was saying, there's so many different kinds. There's kinds of glitter in it. Like some have like big chunks of glitter with a color. You can do really, really cool things with them. So anyway, explore them. See what see what you can find. Thank you, Carol. Thanks for joining us, even though you're traveling. That's very nice of you. I love you guys so much. I will be live next Wednesday um, for the next lesson in this um, in the series. Um, and then the Wednesday after that will be the last one for March will be the end of March, but also the next day. So like in a week and a half or two weeks, I think I'm going to creativation. So, um, also be thinking about if there's anything that you want me to go find out or, see if there's a new product from a company or ask about something, or if there's something you want me to look into for art journal subscription box, if you're part of that, I'm going to be talking to vendors about, um, you know, about getting more materials and stuff, um, sponsorship for the art retreat, which is exciting. So all that fun stuff. And uh, I'm going to be working with graphics. So let me know if there's something you want me to, um, investigate or find out for you. I'll do some lives while we're there on the show floor and show you if there's any, I know there's a couple new products that I'm aware of from different companies that I'll show you there as well. So, oh yeah, new paper trimmer. Yeah, for sure. Ranger will be there definitely. So I will, um, I'll go check out the new paper trimmer. Definitely. Uh, so that's awesome. So keep a list and send them to me. Um, put them in this po in this live post, or you can send me a private message if you want to. It doesn't matter. But I love you guys, um, and I'll see you next Wednesday. And hopefully I see you every morning posting my lives each morning. Um, okay, have a good night, and I love you, and bye.